Hello, I'm Nobby Clark. Welcome to my workshop. A short time ago I made a, a video entitled My Food Boy and Other Engines. Um, it's actually a, a two-part video. I'll explain why it's two parts later. But reviewing um, the engines I showed, I wanted to show some of the engines running. And it, I realised that three of the engines uh, use what are termed spool valves. Um, but when I, I thought more about it, in the three engines, the spool valves are actually entirely different in each of these engines. So I thought I'd make this um, video just to, to show um, the various uh, types of spool valves. And I hope I'm getting this terminology correct. Anyway, I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer so we can look at each uh, individual engine in turn. Bear with me just a moment. Uh, this is the uh, Myford Boy engine. And I guess this uses a, a fairly straightforward spool valve. This is a, a double acting engine. If I just release the arm here and take the spool valve out. Not going to come out that way. Here we go. So this one has um, three grooves in the spool valve here. I hope you can you can see that clearly. Um, these obviously have to machine be machined very very precisely, um, so that you can get the timing of the engine absolutely correct. And and this corresponds to uh, the the air inlet and air or air or steam reaching the the piston cylinder and piston and obviously the exhaust as well so this uh, runs in in, in a, a piston fashion here uh, opening and closing the air paths I can't sh show you the air paths themselves it would mean taking all this apart but um, I'm sure you understand in, in what this actually means. And it's uh, from other um, YouTube videos I've watched. You know, this seems a sort of a fairly common type of valve. Some of the valves only have one groove in them. I mean, luckily with this um, engine kit that uh, I, I had, um, the, I mean, the kit only came with um, the castings for the flywheel and the engine frame. All the other parts. Uh, you provide the metal for and uh, you, you machine all these parts yourself. But the instructions uh, that come with the plans give you um, very, very good detail on the positions um, of all these grooves in the valve itself and how to set up the engine um, to get the timing correct. Now, the next engine along that I, I actually built was this one and this one um, is actually called um, a spool valve engine um, or, or rotary valve engine um, on this one it's quite different um, in that the the spool valve um, is actually attached to the shaft which carries uh, the cam and the flywheel now I've already released the flywheel so we can get this off and I've released the connecting bar here uh, from the cylinder and piston so I can pull this through. Now the design of this is, is, is quite different. Um, here you have your um, air or steam inlet, uh, um, the exhaust here into this position um, and the air steam path through here to the cylinder. And this is controlled by these parts machined out of opposite sides of the shaft here of the um of the valve itself, so as this rotates, you can see it's controlling the air path here and revolving round will control the exhaust path as well. It's a very, very clever design, actually. Um, it took me a while um, from sort of watching 
video showing this type of engine to sort of understand and appreciate how this actually worked. I and mean, when I didn't sort of understand it initially, but you know, once you understand um, the the path of uh, compressed air or, or steam, it, it's all sort of very very logical. Um, I mean, obviously, you've got to get the uh, machining these flats in here precisely in in the correct position, but it was actually quite easy to do. It's only a matter of um, putting the, uh, the the valve into its own cylinder here and, and then making some marks on it so you can machine those out. Let's pop that back in again. Now the next engine um, is my, my version of the a beam engine. This is an engine which gave me an, an enormous amount of, of, of trouble in terms of um, the valve itself. Again this is um, the valve which moves in and out here in a, a cylinder, it's a sort of piston valve type and has to control the uh, air or steam path here and the exhaust at the back here. Um, I, I tried always to get the um, the positioning of the of the spool valve configuration correct <clears throat> and when I misunderstood completely how this, this worked and I had a number of attempts at, at making the valve um, I, I wasted a few bits of brass in, in doing this I wanted to make the, the valve in, in brass because it's running in a, an aluminium cylinder here but in the end I thought well I'm going to experiment uh, with some aluminium because I mean, aluminium was going to be a little bit cheaper to use I've already uncoupled that so I can pull this out and we'll lift that out. Now I hope you can see, this is going to be rather difficult to see, but you see um, that there are some rings, or well, some grooves here. This is where I'd made the valve this way up and you'll see that it has um, uh, a, a coupling in here which would have coupled to this, this rod at the other end and I'd, I'd cut these grooves thinking that um, you'd just cut the grooves all the way around the, the valve but obviously that that's just doesn't isn't, isn't going to work at all because um, you're conflicting uh, the, if you like air and exhaust at the same time really um, I had to sort of think about this for quite a long time to work out how um, the grooves would actually work and whether I've got this right or not I don't know you know whether I've just designed this wrong who knows but I mean the fact is that once I, I sort of figured this out for myself the engine did actually work and I hope you can see this clearly um, the groove um, at the bottom runs from this face around so a quarter of the way round the bar here and controlling uh, the exhaust on the opposite side it runs halfway round so it's uh, quite difficult to to cut this um, but what I did was put the um, the aluminium valve in the lathe chuck and then I use my cross drill attachment with uh, an end mill in to machine these in here Just very very carefully in fact I broke the first um, end mill trying to do this actually on the, on the, for, well, the first attempt really and then into here as well. I just sort of mark the positions out um, by putting a, a marker pen through uh, the holes here to mark the positions required. Now, as I say, you know whether this is absolutely the correct way of doing this, uh, I don't know. I hope you you can see this clearly, but I hope you sort of understand uh, what I've done here. Let's move that out the way so it's not blocking the view of this. So the bottom one uh, runs 
a quarter of the way round, controlling the, the air path and the one controlling exhaust runs sort of halfway round here. But obviously getting the um, positions of these um, absolutely correct is, is vital. Um, I mean the engine did, when I made this one, it ran the first time. So as I'd almost with this engine uh, got to the point of, of giving up, um, I'm sort of glad I didn't in the end. But I, I hope that's um, of interest to you. I mean, when a friend of mine um, was talking to me about um, these sorts of engines, and he, he said, well, you know, why not um, make another sh uh, little video uh, just to explain uh, how these valves work? Um, I mean, if I've... It may be that I, I've made the configuration of the of the cylinder for the spool valve incorrectly in the way that the air path goes through because you I mean I know beam engines are sort of fairly common things uh, that are made uh, by people but I mean maybe um, I've either done it right or I've invented a new way of doing it but who knows well anyway I, mean, I hope that's uh, been of interest to you and uh, Actually, thank you for joining me here. Now, um, if you if you are interested, if you would like to see um, uh, the videos of these engines running, um, I made the, the, the videos uh, a little while back. Um, uh, Myford Boy and other engines. Uh, Myford Boy and these are some of the other engines. Um, the main video I put up um, has had. Um, over 340 views which I think was absolutely fantastic but the strange thing is um, because um, when I filmed this one I made a, an, an error and one of the engines I intended to show running um, I sort of missed the clip completely so I made a, a part two same title my for boy and other engines part two and I load up both of these at uh, videos uh, the same day one after the other but the strangest thing is that part two has had over three and a half thousand views <laughs> um i can't explain that i, I just don't know the, the reason for this so um anyone that looked at part two um missed some of the other engines running and in that video um the first one i, I explained um, a lot more about um the building of the various engines but there you go <laughs> there would be an unexplained mystery anyway um i just hope now that i can uh, get all these engines back together again and uh, i'm gonna have to test them running again but anyway um thank you for joining me again and a, a big thanks to um everyone who subscribed to my videos i'm, I'm absolutely delighted that i've got some other extra subscribers to my channel now and thank you also for people that have um, sent me sort of really lovely comments uh, on my videos. Anyway, this is a last look at these uh, engines and I just hope I've explained this um, correctly to everyone. I've, you know, I must point out I'm not an expert in steam engines at all. Um, most of these engines were very much scratch built and uh, a lot of uh, head scratching to, to work things out. Anyway, thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.